Screen Addiction, Five Ways to Balance Your Screen Time. I'm Dr. Trish Lee. Welcome to Control Your Brain, the podcast. Here in today's episode, I want to share with you some powerful ways that you can start controlling your screen time so it doesn't passively control you. So let's dive right in today. Number one is tune in and tune out. Plan time for your screen time. Don't let it interrupt your day all day, every day through notifications, which we will talk about in just a minute. You decide when you're going to use your screen, not that you're pulled back in every time it summons you. So when are you going to tune into your screen? When are you going to tune out? What that requires is screen-free zones in your home. Decide when and where you're going to use your screen and when and where you are not. This should include mealtime and time with your people. Stay present, intentionally connect. Don't be pulled away. That distracts you into the oblivion of other people's passively throwing their information or you know, ideas about their life at you. Yes, that can be fun, but you decide when you're going to go on your screen, don't be pulled back in. So what I want you to recognize is that every time you are pulled into the screen, it's because it's a super normal stimulus and it is giving your brain a hit of dopamine to make you feel good. Now, the problem with that is if you go back to your screen too often, the dopamine is linked to your screen and it's no longer linked to your life, which it would be if you weren't constantly pulled into the screen. My son Declan, who's adorable, he's 20 years old, he's beefy and amazing. He has very intentionally decided not to go on any social media and he is rocking out his best life. He went to Barnes and Noble the other day to get a new book. He's hanging out with his friends. He's in the gym for an hour and a half, two hours every day, very intentionally moving through his life, not constantly being sucked in. Decide when you're going to tune in and when you're going to tune out. What I said to him was, what about Crunchyroll, which he likes to watch anime on? He's like, I still have Crunchyroll, but I watch a show and he's like, I watch a show to decompress at the end of the evening when I'm done studying. He's in school for engineering and computer programming. A perfect way to relax, something that has story structure that he's decided to tune into. Beautiful. So decide when you're going to tune in and when you're going to tune out. Okay. Number two is curate your social media feed. Social media is people putting their content out for one of two reasons. Reason number one is for likes and for validation and for attention seeking behavior. That's great if you're using it to connect with your people. So that's a really powerful way to use that. You know, you put your content out to show people it's your birthday and that connects you. And then as a friend of someone who's it's your birthday, you get to tell them happy birthday. Using it for connection is really powerful. Using it for negative attention seeking can be very harmful. And what it can do is it can give you anxiety if you're watching the shiniest version of someone's life. And remember, we all have shiny parts to our life. We also have duller parts to our life. I joked a while back that I just wanted to put all the dull parts of my life and all the angsty part of my life on social media, which people also do that. And we're going to talk about that in a second. I was only kidding. But the idea is, you know, it's either to have people connect with you or to get other people's attention. You can do it in a positive way. You can do it in a negative way. You can be involved in it in a positive or a negative way. And when I say positive or negative, that's not a judgment call. It's a healthy or unhealthy way when it comes to brain health and to emotional regulation. So if you constantly watch someone who's showing you the shiniest parts of their life, and it's making you feel bad, that's not healthy. That's what we're talking about here. All right, the second way that a person can use social media is to share their purpose with the world. That is incredibly powerful on both ends. So if you are a person sharing your purpose, man, that feels good. If you're watching other people share their purpose, that feels great too. 
And that purpose is actually more of that connection piece than the attention seeking. So my daughter, Sersha rides horses. She has a feed just for her horse riding and she's connected to all other people in the horse world there. Such a beautiful thing. I just saw a Super Bowl commercial. It was for ranchers, ranchers using TikTok to teach the world about ranching in today's day and age. Love it. And it inspires me to teach people about brain health. Seeing people on purpose is just amazing. So remember, those are the two ways you can be involved. Choose connection, choose purpose, stay away from attention seeking. And definitely if it's making you feel bad or it's giving you FOMO, the fear of moving out, the fear of missing out, get back on purpose in your life and have the joy of missing out. JOMO. Okay, so curate that feed. Number three is doom scrolling or news. So news inherently for a long time has been the reporting of the awful things that happened today or yesterday. And now that's carried over into social media where people will doom scroll, watch intruder videos, watch accident videos, watch crash videos. Please realize that when you're watching content like that, or even if you're consuming a lot of news about all the terrors of the world, it can change your perception of the world. It can give you fear and anxiety. It gives many people fear and anxiety. So if you want to know what's going on in the world, watch it for a little bit when you've decided to tune in, but then tune back out to all the positive things that are happening in the world and all the things that are happening in your world. That's what will get you on purpose. So be careful of doom scrolling and news. Okay, number four is turn off your notifications. Notifications, again, are gonna do one of two things. One, it's gonna give you a dopamine hit. It's gonna be like, oh, there's somebody who wants to tell me something and it will give your brain a little dopamine, again, pulling you back into the screen to feel good. I want you to go into your life to feel good. Secondarily, if you have your email notification showing up all the time, it might give you a hit of cortisol. I know that was happening to me and I had to take my watch off because I could not get the email notifications off. And I have many different emails uh, for work and for parenting and for personal stuff so my watch kept buzzing me and every time it did it was something for me to tend to and it would give me a little cortisol spike it was really starting to wear on me so i took that watch off and i am free now i schedule times to check my email through the day i never check my email after 7 p.m so i don't put something in my brain that needs to be taken care of that i don't have time to take care of I'm very conscientious and I'm very careful about what I put into my mind and my brain. That's what I want for you too. Turn off those notifications. You decide when you're going to check all of it. Okay, and then lastly, number five is find some alternative activities that give your brain dopamine for pleasure. Give your brain serotonin for joy. Give your brain oxytocin for connection, the happiness trifecta. Find those activities in the real world, in your life. On my intake form um, for my neurofeedback coaching program, where I work with a lot of people who have screen addiction, there's two questions. One question says, what do you do for fun? The other question says, how do you express your creativity? More and more people are writing, I don't do anything for fun and I don't have a way to express my creativity. That is a tragedy. So. I want you to recognize there has to be dopamine in your life or you're going to be pushed back into the screen because the human condition as we live it these days, most people, is a very stressful one. We have to have ways to have fun, happiness trifecta in the real world. Okay, so number two, let me tell, talk to you quickly about what it, the, all of this does to your brain performance. Screen brain syndrome is real. It exists on a continuum, and the more you use a screen in all these different ways, your brain is going to be linked to the screen to feel good at first, and then to not feel bad because of a dopamine dependency. So many people have screen addiction these days without fully realizing that it's a screen addiction, and 
If you know me, you know I don't love the word addiction, which is why I'm using the term screen brain syndrome. It really is a syndrome, meaning you can be hooked on all these different things in different ways. All the people I work with, they have different things going, but inherently it's a dopamine dependency from the screen. What this does to your brain is at first, it will put your brain into strained brain, meaning that you have more anxiety, you feel overwhelmed, you feel fatigued, tired, and wired. And then what happens is if you do that long enough, you'll tip into drained brain, where your system's burnt out and exhausted from so much overstimulation from the screen, whether that be gaming, social media, just consuming content, whether that be news, it can look differently for all people. Hopefully it's not explicit content. If it is, please jump over to my other YouTube channel where you can, there's 900 videos helping you stay out of explicit content on the screen. But just recognize it will grab your brain and take it for a ride. That's why I'm here because I don't want that for you. I want you to use the green zone optimal brain performance pattern so you can rock out your best life. All right, let's talk about number three, your gestalt activity for the day, connecting your mind, your body, and your brain. Become more aware. Anytime you're interacting with screens in the way that I've talked about today, pause for a moment, still your body, quiet your mind, tap in. How do you feel? Recognize what it's doing to you. Recognize when you get a notification, what does that make you feel? What does it do to your system? Recognize when you're working and you feel the pull to go on a screen in a different way, even though it's work time, recognize that pull, feel what it feels like. Start connecting the dots on all of this. Then that leads us to our last activity for the day, which is your journaling exercise. Get your journal out and write down what you're noticing about your screen time usage pattern. Where do you fall in terms of screen brain syndrome? Are you pulled back to explicit content? Are you pulled back to passive consumption on social media? Are you pulled back to shows? Are you pulled to gaming? Are, is your email or your text blowing you up? Are you pulled into Snapchat? And again, not all of it is bad. It requires moderation in that, in that stimuli spectrum. Some should be avoided, but moderation for the rest of it. So become aware of your patterns. Then write down how you can get on purpose in your life and get dopamine from the real world, from your life. Figure it out. What do you like to do? What brings you pleasure, joy, happiness, and connection? Write down two, three, four things and start rounding out your toolbox instead of your one tool of going to the screen. All right, I hope this helps you out and uh, I'll see you next time. And until then, control your brain or it'll control you.